Howdy guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. This is going to be the first of a number of tutorials relating to <coughs> running JavaScript on the ESP32 using a JavaScript engine called a duct tape. Duct tape. Uh, thankfully you don't have to know any of the low level programming stuff so the end goal will be you will have JavaScript running on your ESP32. Now in order to get there there are some instructions that need to be followed. So I'm going to give uh, uh, repeats of these instructions in the text of the YouTube uh, uh, video so you'll be able to see them there but I'm going to walk you through them here and give you the links to where you can go read them yourself. Thankfully the process is relatively straightforward but I do want to say that this is a work in progress. The whole ESP32 duct tape project is uh, uh, the paint is still wet on it, shall we say. So there will likely be changes over the next uh, weeks and months and maybe years uh, as uh, the this uh, project improves. So if you find that the instructions here deviate in any way from your own experiences, uh, please bear with us while we get this right. So let's walk through the story. So there's a website, I'll give you the URL in the uh, YouTube commentary with a set of simple instructions. So at a high level what we're going to do is we're going to download a binary. The binary contains the flashable images onto a regular ESP32. We're going to download and extract those images. We're going to flash it into the ESP32 and then we're going to start it up and talk about programming in uh, JavaScript using duct tape on the ESP32. So let's go ahead and follow the instructions. So first of all, I'm going to make a directory called duct tape. That's just where my working stuff is going to be. Now I'm going to download from the interwebs the uh, binary files. I'm pasting it here and that is downloading a tar gzip file. Now I'm going to extract that tar gzip file and uh, that has extracted all the goodies. Now let's talk about what we got here. We got a number of files extracted. First of all there's the uh, application binary itself. This is the master program and then the ESP32 also wants a bootloader and it wants a partitions file. So those are standard ESP32 components. Next come two image files. Now what those do is those contain file systems. The file system images are file systems that are going to be made available to the JavaScript environment which contain the control programs which are themselves written in JavaScript for running the JavaScript environment. Again, technical files, you don't have to worry about them. And finally I've given you a sample installation script which can be used to actually flash your ESP32 with all of these files without having to know any fancy commands. So having extracted the ESP32 duct tape tools, now we want to load in our uh, uh, Expressive ESP IDF. Now if you've already got that you, you don't need this but if this is a virgin environment what we're doing now is we're loading in the Expressive IDF. Now the reason we do that is so we get a copy of the ESP tool. Now the ESP tool is the tool used to flash ESP32 uh, devices. Finally, I set uh, the environment variable to point to my new ESP IDF and now we're ready to flash my ESP32. So uh, at this point we're going to run this install binaries.shell script. Make sure your ESP32 is in flash mode. Um, Normally you can do that by hitting the flash button on your ESP32. I've got mine wired into some software which automatically does that. But if we now run the install binary script, that will connect to the ESP32 and start flashing the binaries into the device. Now I've set the default baud rate on this script to be uh, 115200 which is relatively slow but that's pretty much assured to work on everybody's devices. If your device can handle higher baud rates, edit the shell script, uh, turn up the baud rate and uh, this will progress much faster but even as it is it only takes a few seconds. So 
it's uploading into the ESP32 the distinct binaries. Uh, it's just loaded the application binary and the other binaries will be much quicker because they are much smaller in size. So it's cooking along, it's cooking along and it's flashed. Now, <coughs> excuse me, now our ESP32 is ready to run. So I'm going to run a screen command. This is a terminal emulator. You may choose different terminal emulators such as PuTTY or your, or your terminal emulator of choice. And now I reboot my ESP32. And we see a standard ESP32 boot up screen. And now duct tape is running. So duct tape is up and running. Now duct tape is the uh, JavaScript engine. Now. This is where we want to talk about what duct tape ESP32 actually is. It's a JavaScript runtime and compilation time and integrated development environment. So what ESP32 duct tape gives you is everything you need to build JavaScript applications. An editor, a compiler, plus the ability to run those applications. Now, because we are working in an ESP32 environment, it makes absolute sense that the ESP32 be running in its network mode, i.e. connected to a access point. Now, when you boot your ESP32 device, obviously the code I'm supplying doesn't know the network ID the SSID of your access point. How could I? So when the ESP32 duct tape boots up for the first time, it actually becomes its own access point. So the ESP32 is sitting there quietly now, waiting for a network client to connect to it. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect, uh, in reality you would connect your phone, but I am going to connect my desktop PC. I'm going to connect it to this access point. And if all goes well, we should see a message saying my network has connected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a, uh, a browser which will point to my access point. And what we get is we get a browser screen that looks like this. Now this is being served by the ESP32. And in here you would enter your network access point, your network pa uh, password, and if you choose, this is optional, but I recommend it, you would specify the IP address that you want your ESP32 to have. So having set these parameters by bringing up a browser which is connected to your ESP32, when we hit the submit button, that information that we specified here in this browser that was served up by the ESP32 is now remembered by the ESP32. So when I hit the submit button, the ESP32 takes that data, waits a few seconds, and then the ESP32 reboots itself. Now the ESP32 knows the access point information in order to allow the ESP32 to join my local Wi-Fi network. So while the ESP32 is in range of my SSID and uh, 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 other things, it will always boot up and connect to my network. Now having connected to the network, I can now open a regular browser point it to my ESP32 at port number 8000 slash web slash IDE dot HTML, hit the enter key, wait a few seconds. We see a lot of things are happening on the ESP32, but now a browser page is being loaded from the ESP32, which provides us a JavaScript development environment. So here I can now enter JavaScript code and I can hit the run button and that code will run on the ESP32.
So let's create ourselves a simple script. So something like for var i equals zero, i is smaller than 10, i plus plus. So we're going to loop through this 10 times and we're going to log hello world and plus the number i and we'll save and there we go we've entered that hit the run button and there is our javascript program running now i've just touched upon the merest touched upon of the esp32 induct tape what i've given you here is the set of steps and instructions necessary to get yourself up and running in 10 minutes or less the further tutorials, the further videos from now on will concentrate on using this environment to build yourself ESP32 applications that will interface with GPIO, networking, provide web servers, I squared C, SPI, Bluetooth, and the list goes on and on and on of other ESP32 functions. The distinction here is that we'll be able to write and run these programs in a JavaScript environment. Now, this is not a religious war on, on languages. If you love C, God bless C. If you love Java, Python, Lua, go for it. This is merely an alternative for your consideration should you wish to work in a JavaScript environment on the ESP32. I hope you found this useful and uh, I look forward to uh, building more of these videos in the future. Thanks now and bye-bye.